Thank you to all our veterans and their families for your extraordinary service and sacrifice in defending our beloved land. You know, we gather here this morning to reflect upon the better angels of our nature, the moral compass of America, and the guardians of our freedom who remind us that there's more that unites us than divides us. And I've had the honor of meeting some of the veterans here this morning, and, and you all really inspire me. You know, despite retiring the uniform, you continue to execute the mission, making our communities and our country a better place to live, work, and play. And I look forward to learning more about each of you at breakfast. Uh, but I thought I'd like to share the story of some of the patriots who helped me get here today. My father was only 14 years old when his father died. He grew up quick, cutting lawns and pumping gas to help support his mother, a full-time nurse, and his two younger brothers. His father, my grandfather, joined the Army after the Korean War and went on to help build the landing gear for the Apollo Lunar Module. My grandfather loved his family to the moon and back, and he had big dreams for his son. My father met my mother in high school, and even though she was born in a town in the other side of New York, they shared a common heritage woven from the sacred cloth of our nation. Her father, my grandfather, was the son of a shoemaker in Florence who immigrated from Italy to America in search of opportunity. The day after Pearl Harbor, my grandfather signed up for duty in Nimitz's Navy as a cook, sailed throughout the Pacific. Back home, my grandmother, one of 14 children to German-Irish parents, worked as a switchboard telephone operator. After the war, they started a family, saved their money, and opened a small business, a family neighborhood restaurant. You know, my grandfather was in the business of not only serving up a great dining experience, he was in the business of bringing people and communities together. Where the elite need to eat was his slogan, because in his eyes, each person was extraordinary and deserved the chance to live up to his or her God-given potential. He took those values and that vision to Miami in 1977, and a year later, my parents followed. Through hard work and perseverance, they spent the next 35 years satisfying the stomachs and souls of South Florida. My parents share not only an enduring love, but an unwavering belief in the prospects of this country. And they too had big dreams for their two sons, a common dream born in service and sacrifice. They named me Walter, or ruler of armies, after my Navy grandfather, knowing that in America, you have the power to chart your own course. But it was growing up here in Miami, the gateway of a nation, the land of a patriot, where I saw all that is best in America. People of every race, faith, and profession coming together with a seat at the table and a story to share. I made lasting friendships, discovered my faith, and the real power of teamwork, and received the best education right here in these neighborhoods. I stand here today grateful for the service of my heritage knowing that the values and dreams of my grandparents and parents live on in my two extraordinary children, Aubrey and James. I also stand here knowing that I have a solemn obligation to pay it forward and to answer the call to service. Veterans Day reminds us why America is truly great. Not because of the size of our bank accounts or the reach of our Twitter following, but by the growth of our people. Growth seeded and nourished and that eloquently simple creed our forefathers bestowed upon us. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Today, I call on every American to reflect on those eternal values and ask ourselves, do those we serve become healthier, wiser, safer, freer? Do they in turn serve themselves? Service is the real measure of a great nation. Altruism is the true test of an American. 
and sustain selfless service is a sacred responsibility we all share. We all pledge allegiance to the same stars and stripes. Some of us reaffirm that pledge by swearing before Almighty God a common oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. For 242 years, our veterans have stood the watch. A simple faith in our own to put the needs and safety of others before their own. They stand ready and eager to defend those who can't defend themselves so that every parent can tuck their child in bed safely each and every night. They stand the watch so that every willing and able American, regardless of gender or who they love, can serve the country they love. So that we can speak our mind and mind our business without having a target on our backs. Or opening or growing our own business without having to pay someone off. That's why we stand. That's why our republic, that shining city on the hill, that great experiment in the self-governance of humans still stands. Our veterans are men and women, sons and daughters, husbands and wives, friends, neighbors, true patriots, who after being piped ashore, go on to be our bosses and bus drivers, our teachers and coaches, our first responders and our community leaders, our role models, still upholding the very principles they swore to defend. Our veterans lead by example, serving with honor and integrity on and off the battlefield, and their moral stamina is the best that this country has to offer. It's the business owner, right, who gives a felon a second chance. It's the school teacher who encourages all students to find their voice and to use it. It's the police officer who turns into a national guardsman in times of crisis. It's the retired army officer from right here in South Florida who starts a nonprofit in his community to help disabled veterans and Gold Star families heal the wounds of war. You know, a couple months ago, my seven-year-old seven niece, Adriana, uh, completed a homework assignment about who inspires you. This is what she wrote. My dad is my hero because he can do lots of cool things. He worked for my grandparents, who were Grace and Lenny. I called her the next day. I was, I was, I was touched. I was, I said, hey, John, you want to know something? And she said, what's that, Uncle Walter? I said, we got something in common. Your dad is my hero, too. So whenever the world makes you cynical, whenever you want to turn your pain into passion, Whenever you seek clarity or courage, look to a veteran. Look to someone like my brother Adam, a Marine infantryman and veteran who served three combat tours in the Middle East. After eight years in the Corps, he did what many of us do. Took off his medals, remained humble about his service, and carried on in the best way he knew how, by serving. He finished college and took over our family restaurant with even bigger dreams than our parents. Even while growing the family business, the heart of the restaurant remains service. You know, I'll, I'll never forget the day he said he was coming back to South Florida. And as I listened to him explain why he was getting out, his devotion to family and service and absolute conviction to helping people in need, I thought, my brother is all that any of us could hope for in a sibling or a child. But then I ask myself, and I, and I ask you now, are we serving Adam and the rest of our veterans in the way that they serve us in that same way? As Americans, we must embrace our cherished ethos that no one is left out or no one is left behind. There are no exceptions. For alongside our exceptional independence of thought and action lies an unbreakable bond and trust between brothers and sisters, veterans and citizens. Together, we must fight harder for the veterans we see living on the streets, or those living paycheck to paycheck, barely able to keep the lights on or food on the table. Harder for the spouse struggling to find work, or struggling to juggle the demands of work and home during long deployments. Harder for the countless loved ones of those still missing, 
and of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. And we must fight with all our might for the young men and women from Alabama to Alaska and the thousands more like them around this country who feel isolated or that life is no longer worth living. They face daunting challenges. And we have a fundamental responsibility as, as citizens of this great nation to open our hearts and ears. It starts with listening and having a conversation. More than just, thank you for your service. You know, the people I know and meet all around the country want the same opportunities as everyone else. And, and they've earned their chance to live out their dreams. They don't expect government to solve all their problems. They just want to know that a government of the people, by the people, and for the people has got their back when they need it most. They know we can do better, and we must. Our men and women fighting for America deserve nothing less. Our veterans are people of principle, decency, and common sense, whom the country can count on to do what is right. They give the world confidence in American leadership. Cutting war is short with honor and dignity resisting the calls of preventive war and going to war only when the survival of our nation and of humanity is at stake. Our veterans restore stability to our nation and move us forward in measured steps under the rule of law, both at home and abroad. We can do the same by following their example. Our veterans show us how to act with courage not blind courage, but reflective courage. The courage to make hard choices when easier ones are available. The courage of the 101st Airborne Division enforcing a district court order in Little Rock, Arkansas. The courage of a young Lance Corporal bravely patrolling the streets of, young, of Baghdad and Ramadi. The courage of a nation, our nation, fighting for truth, justice, and equality, in a Nazi world filled with lies, bigotry, and injustice. The courage of a fat kid with the heart of a lion who believes he too can play a small part in defending America. Courage in the face of fear. Courage in the face of difficulty. The courage to believe. I believe we can give our veterans the care they need and deserve. Expand opportunities for veterans with disabilities and help our guardians Learn the skills they need to compete and succeed. I believe we can build homes for the homeless, give hope to the hopeless, and heal a nation from the profound and enduring effects of war. I believe we can ask for help, stand up for each other, and make a positive difference. Keep America strong and safe, and carry out a promise that ended World War I 99 years ago today that someday people and nations can live in peace. So let's stand united as one people in our values and our commitments. Measure them up against today's reality, to the legacy of our veterans and the future we leave our children and grandchildren. My fellow Americans, let us go forth to serve and lead the land we love with God's blessing and help, knowing that together our better days are still very much ahead. Thank you very much, everybody. May God bless you. May God bless you.